In this chapter, we're going to learn about loops and control structures. This will provide us ways to repeat commands within PHP without having to type them again and again. We'll be able to set up loop structures whereby PHP will repeat a certain set of commands as many times as we define in our script. First of all, we're going to look about repeating commands using the for loop and then the while loop and then we're going to look at another kind of loop known as the do while loop. Then we're going to look at escape commands such as break which we touched on briefly in the last chapter and exit which allows us a way of escaping completely from our PHP script. Let's take a look at our text editor and try a for loop. Now the command for is the one that we need to carry out this kind of loop. We just type that in, then we put some conditions within a pair of, curly, a pair of uh, normal brackets, rounded brackets, then we put the commands in here whatever commands we like within curly brackets and that's the basic structure of our for loop. It may look a little like an if statement but we'll see a difference now. Let's put in some of these conditions in our for loop here. Basically there are three statements that have to go as the parameters for the for command. The first of which sets up an initial value for a variable. Typically it will be something like this. Variable i is set to 0. Our next statement will give a condition for the loop to continue being processed. So in this case variable i is less than 6. And the third and final statement in the parameters for our for command is something that is executed every time. You may remember this increment operator, plus plus, from a previous movie. What that does is it adds 1 to i. So every time this loop operates, 1 will be added to i. So let's put in a simple command here. We use the echo statement again and we'll just echo the number and let's put in a br tag, an HTML tag. Notice I use quotes to enclose that and I use the little dot there which tells PHP to run these two together the concatenation operator that we learned about earlier. And I put a semicolon at the end. Let's save that. And we'll save that as first for loop dot PHP. Okay, let's go to our browser and we'll try that out. Don't worry if you don't understand what the script's saying right at present. That's fine. We'll just see how it works and we'll get into more details when we've seen this. Okay. Our for loop prints out the numbers 0 to 5 and it puts a break in between each, meaning each of these numbers is on a separate line. So effectively, this command has been carried out six times. But each time this has a different value. Now, why is it that it goes from 0 to 5? Didn't we say 6 would be the, uh, the maximum here? Well, not quite. This command, or this statement rather, is the condition by which the loop will continue to be processed. 
So when i actually gets to 6, it's no longer smaller than 6. So the largest number for which this is still true is 5. That's why we went from 0 to 5. Now, we can change any and all of these statements. We could start at 12, for instance. We could continue up to 24. And we could, maybe we don't want to add 1 to i every time. Maybe we want to add 2. We're using the combined operator here to add 2 to our variable every time. Let's save that and see what that does. Same number of numbers shows up, but they're very different numbers. It starts at 12, as we specified, and it goes up by 2 every time, and we said less than 24. So it got to 22, it added 2, and that was 24. And so this condition was no longer true, and so the loop exited, and we got to the end. So that's a for loop. Now there's one thing, uh, one thing further I want to say about loops in general, and for loops are no exception, and that is that as we program, we need to be very careful that we give a proper closing condition. What I mean by that is, we have to make sure that our loop will eventually become, will eventually exit. What we want to avoid is the infinite loop. For instance, in this case, I will eventually no longer be less than 24, because this is going up. However, what if we replaced this with this combined operator? if we wanted to reduce the value of i by 2 every time. Well, let's have a look. We'll see what that does. We'll go back to our browser and refresh. That's thinking for a while. Oh, and here it comes. And as we can see, it goes down quite a way. It's reducing by 2 every time. How far does it go? We can see minus 20 down there. When I'm trying to drag down, the browser becomes quite unresponsive, and we can see here that the numbers are getting quite, well, they're not big, they're very, very small. They're negative numbers that are getting way out of hand. In fact, as we can see from this scroll bar, look at the size of that scroll box there. This HTML page is getting huge. We better stop for the sake of the computer's blood pressure and we'll scroll right down here and see how far it got. It got right the way down to 16,000, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, 161,918. And that's a negative figure, as we can see from that minus sign there. So it was going quite a way, and it was only because we pressed the stop button that it ever stopped. Otherwise, it would still be happily trying to process more values for i. Now, why did this happen? This wasn't what we meant. We didn't want to end up with a huge page of HTML like this. Let's have a look at our script. Our starting condition started i at 12. And every time the loop, oper the loop executed, i would be reduced by 2. So that looks like it should work. What's the problem? problem is this closing condition. This condition continued to be true and would continue to be true forever. Because since i was being reduced continuously, it was always less than 24. Minus 161,918 was definitely less than 24 and no matter how much you took away, you would continue to have a figure that was less than 24. So there's an example of an infinite loop and the kind of thing that we'd want to avoid. We could easily remedy this, of course. We could say greater than zero. 
let's take a look at that. Refresh our browser. This time, much more sensibly, starts at 12, takes two off every time, and it stops very conservatively just before zero. So we fixed our infinite loop problem. I hope you can see what I mean about the dangers of infinite loops. I suggest that you take some time to play around with for loops, make some of your own. Before we go on to our next movie, and you learn about while loops, which do a similar thing.